a juvenile murder suspect who has been committed to stand trial at the High Court for the alleged murder of a 10-year-old boy at Kaswa in the central region on Monday sent the Kaneshi District Court into a deafening silence when he confessed the crime and another murder previously unheard of since his arrest along with his suspected accomplice. The 15-year-old boy, name withheld, told the court presided over by Ms. Rosemann Ajere Dodu that the murder of the 10-year-old boy was not their first. His alleged accomplice, Nicholas Kwame Kani, however, denied being party to any murder, but the two were committed to stand trial after they had been charged with conspiracy and murder of Ishmael Mensa Abdullah. The two are said to have murdered Abdullah on April 3rd this year for ritual purposes after they had lured him into an uncompleted building and killed him with a club and a cement block. The juvenile, who was in tears throughout the committal proceedings, also told the court that the ghost of the deceased had been haunting him to tell the truth. They are to be arranged at the High Court on September 20th this year. Social media users are incensed over a trending video that shows a religious leader force kissing some female teacher trainees while he stood on a podium. Reverend Father Balthazar Obeng Larbi of St. Monica's College of Education, fully dressed in his cassock, was seen kissing in turn some girls who were on stage with him. In one instance, he was seen gesturing to one of the girls who appeared very uncomfortable with the move to take off her face mask before holding her head and giving her a kiss on the lips. The video shot by someone in the audience has generated wide condemnation on social media, although a few people have jumped to the Reverend Father's defense, describing his action as a holy kiss. Reports indicate that the Reverend Father Lobby subjected the final year students to the kiss after presenting them with gifts reading the Bible. The Anglican Church, which runs the St. Monica's College of Education at Mampong, says it is investigating the issue. The Reverend Father is said to be a lawyer and a chaplain of the school. The Anglican Church of Ghana says it has begun an investigation into a circulating video of a priest force kissing some female students of the St. Monica's College of Education in the Ashanti Mampon Diocese of the Ashanti region. A statement signed by the Executive Director to the Metropolitan Archbishop of Ghana, Venerable Dr. George Dawson Amwa said the church is saddened by the news and wishes to state expressly that a thorough investigation has immediately been instituted into the matter and the action of the said priest will be dealt with in accordance with the norms and values of the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church also indicated that all efforts are being made to engage the students concerned through counseling sessions to, quote, avert any psychological issues that may arise as a result of the viral video. The 2016 National Best Maize Farmer, Kofi Vigno, has bemoaned the massive abuse of agrochemicals by farmers across Ghana, especially those in the Bono, Bono East and Ahafo regions. The awful practice, according to the agro-businessman, has serious ripple effects on food production, domestic agro-processing industry, as well as the health of the farmers themselves and their community members.
He stated that farmers misusing pesticides risk cancer, birth defects, and damage to the central nervous system, adding that it results in, quote, more common problems including skin irritation, headaches, general body weakness, difficulty in breathing, and dizziness. Speaking in an interview at Quatri, near Shinyani, Mr. Finyo said farmers should be encouraged to use organic fertilizers and cultivate their vegetables by using the greenhouse technology. He explained that stakeholders must recognize that education is important for improving farmers' awareness regarding health implications associated with the agrochemical abuse. The audit service has found that telecom companies Vodafone and Glow are yet to pay debts of more than 25 million Ghana cities they owe the National Communication Authority. The service in its audit report on Public Boards Corporation and other statutory institutions ending December 2020 indicated that while GLOW owed the government 17 million Ghana cities for services it received from the NCA, including its operating license, Vodafone owed 8.9 million Ghana cities, which was a fine it was slapped with for non-compliance to quality of service requirements in 2018. Per the report, the management of the NCA indicated that it had been in touch with GLOW to retrieve the debt and that the company had explained that they had, quote, cash flow challenges, which they are working on to improve upon. According to the NCA, a new payment plan was approved in July 2019 to enable GLOW to settle the debt. The Bank of Ghana says it will, by September 2021, begin the pilot phase for the first digital currency known as the eCity in the country. Also known as the Central Bank Digital Currency, it is expected to operate in a sandbox in the interim before its introduction to the general public as a legal tender for financial transactions. To ensure a smooth operation of the yet-to-be-introduced eCity, the Bank of Ghana has partnered Jersek Divrent to provide the technology and develop the solution adapted to Ghana's requirement. The currency will be piloting with banks, payment service providers, merchants, consumers, and other relevant stakeholders. <music> Head of FinTech and Innovation at the Bank of Ghana, Kwame Opong, explained in simple terms what the ECD is and the difference between the ECD and cryptocurrency. Quote, in our case, an ECD is the digital version of our sovereign currency, and so it's only the digital version of the CD that we have. So we have notes, we have coins, and then we have the digital version of the CD as well. So that's really what an ECD is. Music